Uh, so we're very happy to have Fabio Abruzzi here tell us about uh, confinement and one forms. So. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, uh, seminar series. And yeah, today I'm going to talk about holography one for symmetries and confinement. And this is uh, based on a, a paper that appeared last month uh, in collaboration with Marike Dowie and Sakura at Oxford. And so let me give you a bit of motivation why uh, we study uh, IF4 symmetries and anomalies. It's because they constrain and they can constrain the strongly coupled dynamics of a theory. And in particular, in n equals one super young means or adjoint uh, uh, QCD theories, uh, confinement has a precise notion in terms of one for symmetry percepting vacuum. So the one for symmetry related to, uh, and they act on, uh, we will see that will, uh, they act on Wilson line. And what happens is that if uh, Wilson line has a uh, vacuum expectation value for the, for the Wilson line language goes to infinity, which is zero, then the vacuum would be uh, confined, confined. Whereas if it's not zero, then the, the vacuum would not be confined. So the goal of this uh, work has been to study confinement in terms of the one for symmetries uh, and, uh, and uh, their anomalies. And by using holography, and in particular, we use holography to, de to determine these symmetries and uh, their anomalies. And the setup where we embed, uh, especially in N equals one superior means, is the cascade theories, which flow to SUM superior means. And the dual, uh, gravity, the dual gravity setup is uh, uh, the Klebanov strasser solution, which is a solution on, of, uh, of 10 dimensional to be supergravity. So let me give you a uh, brief uh, um, explanation of uh, what are one form symmetries. So one form symmetries are a generalization of standard symmetry, which act, instead of acting point particle operator, they act on extended operator. So in, for example, they can act of, uh, on, uh, so higher form symmetry, they can act in general of a Q-dimensional, uh, uh, on an operator defined on a Q-dimensional support of your uh, space time. So for example, uh, if we have a Wilson line, which is a one-dimensional object, defined as an allonomy of the gauge field, uh, then the, there is a topological operator, which is, a, for example, in three dimensions, this would be a circle surrounding this whistle line, which measure the charge of this, uh, of this whistle line under this one for symmetry. And in particular, it also generates the symmetry. So this will, uh, they, will, they will be called the charge operator, whereas the, the whistle line are the charged object. Of, uh, of this higher form, of this one form symmetry in this case. So in gauge theories without a matter, uh, it happens that the one form symmetry are associated to the center of this, uh, of the gauge group. And here, for example, a list of, uh, of the center of the, uh, the gauge groups. And the way the one form symmetry acts, uh, indeed they, they act on fundamental whistle line in uh, with a phase, uh, uh, with, with a phase in, in this way. And uh, for example, for SUN, where the, the center is the N, this, uh, this phase uh, L, uh, to, the, to the power of N is, is, uh, is trivial. And it's also important to turn on background for these uh, one for symmetries. In this case, we have a, a two index antisymmetric a tensor, which is valuing this cohomology group. But it's important because when we, once we turn this, this background, what happens is that the instant on density becomes fraction. And so when the instant on density becomes fraction, then we can study anomalies uh, for, for, for the theories. So there is a nice story that relates um, the line operator of a gauge theory with these uh, uh, one form symmetries. So for example, if we, if we start from a, a symmetry, from a theory with the, from a gauge theory where the, the Lie algebra is uh, specified by this G, then the line operator of the, the most general line operators of the theory will be labeled by two integers. So it's sort of uh, electric and magnetic charge which takes value in the lattice, which is defined as two copy of the center of the, of this, of the simply connected gauge uh, group. And there is an important condition that must be satisfied. So these are the, 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 the line operators which are labeled by these two integers and they, important condition that two line operators 
uh, massa defined is this uh, data quantization condition, which is this basically this, uh, this pairing of the characters. So there are different ways of uh, solving this condition. For example, if we take SU2 as a gauge algebra, uh, the lattice would be specified by two copies of Z2. So one is the electric, one is the magnetic. So if we choose a lattice which is generated by this, uh, um, by this uh, Wilson line, then the one for symmetry would be the electric one for symmetry, and the gauge group would be SU2. And then there are other choices which are uh, also consistent with this condition, and which are, for example, the uh, so if the lattice uh, is generated by the trough line, now the one for symmetry would be the magnetic one for symmetry, and the gauge group would be now be, will uh, will be SO. Uh, so this is uh, the theta angle. Uh, I, I don't want to go into the details of the theta angle, but just to, to say that there is another choice uh, for, uh, uh, for a Wilson line, another consistent choice for the Wilson lines, with, which is related to the SU3 with the uh, other class of, uh, of the theta angle. And this reflects in ADS-CFT uh, very nicely in a theory uh, in five dimensions. So in, uh, in, in ADS-CFT, for example, in ads 5, ADS 5 cross S5, we have this theory, this coupling in five dimension. And by studying the boundary condition of this, of this uh, theory in five dimension, we can specify the global structure of the theory of the dual theory living at the boundary. For example, there can be boundary condition consistent with SUN, SUN mod ZN, and SUN mod ZK, where ZK is a, is a subgroup of the theory. I will be more specific when I will describe this in the case of the Klebanov structure solution. And indeed, let me now review um, this, uh, uh, the, the solution uh, found by Klebanov Stansler. And so we start from string theory, and in particular, I type to be a uh, string theory with B free brain probing at the to be conical geometry. And the conical geometry is a Calabi outcome over this five dimensional space, which is called T11. This five dimensional space looks like topologically a product of S3 times S2. So if we don't have any M5 brain wrapping this S2, then the near horizon will look at like ADS, ADS5 times T11. But the back reaction of MD5 brain um, uh, wrapped on this S2 then they, they will back react on the, on the, on the external geometry, uh, making it different from ADS5. And we will see the metric in a second. So this solution is also called the fractional D3 brain. So, so this configuration and D3 plus M D5 will lead to fractional D3 brains. And the dual field theory of this solution is uh, given by the cascade theories where one of the two coupling has flown to strong coupling, and in particular, the coupling with, the, the, with bigger ring. So when, in this case, this flow to strong coupling, and the, the solution at this point, this, is, this will be a running solution that we, we will see in a moment, and the solution will correspond to the strong coupling of these theories, of this theory, which is related by cyber duality at, uh, at this point. And so the quiver is basically specified by this uh, SU k plus one n times SU k n, where we, now we, sp we specify n to be a multiple of n, uh, a multiple of n. So the holographic solution uh, looks, uh, uh, looks like the following. So we have a uh, running solution, so a solution which depends on a radial coordinate r. So here is the metric and this metric is only valid in one regime. So the solution splits up into two regimes. So this is the metric in the, for a, uh, R very large. And this solution is valid when, so we will have like quantized free form flux. This is due to the, uh, to the fact that there are uh, in, the, in, the brain jump, in the brain setup, there are T5 brain wrapping S2. And we will be a R dependent, we will have a, an R dependent B and moreover, there is also an FI, which is also R dependent, but in order to, for the solution to be valid, we need this to be, uh, to be very large. And moreover, another feature of this solution is that at particular slices of the solution, then K for this, 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 this number will be this point. 
And this is precisely, uh, the slices will correspond precisely to these slices, to the solution at this, uh, at this, uh, at this point of the, of the flow. But there is a regime where the solution is not valid anymore. And this metric in particular approaches a naked singularity. And this one uh, it starts when k, so this kappa k, sorry, is, uh, is uh, close to zero. And this basically corresponds to SUM, uh, super Yannis, which has flown as, uh, which has flown to strong coupling. But there is a smooth metric which describes the solution, and this is the, the, the four conifold. And then the four conifold metric is, is given by this one. So where we have an S3 and an S2, and there is a warping factor which uh, uh, which only fibers the, the S2, and there is a three four flux on uh, on this S3. So the, the goal of, uh, of uh, our work was indeed to compute the five dimensional bulk topological coupling in order to evaluate the anomaly of the theory in this holographic way. So it usually turns out that by evaluating this topological coupling, once uh, we compute anomaly for the dual uh, field theory living at the boundary. So in particular, the anomaly would be related by the same mechanism to, to this coupling in this way. So um, let me just tell you a couple of uh, things about uh, the field theory of, uh, of uh, this cascade, uh, of the, 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 field, the dual field theory of this, uh, of this cascade solution. So we have this quiver with uh, B fundamental matter. So this is on a general slice. And the matter, so the bifundamental fundamental matter will break this center uh, to, uh, to this group, which is the, uh, the GCT of M and M. And this is because the bifundamental matter is uncharged under this subgroup of this, uh, this uh, uh, product group. So in particular, if N is equal to KM, then the GCD of M and M will be equal to M. So this is uh, consistent with the fact that uh, SUM has strong coupling. Uh, the, we have a SUM as strong, the, the dual solution will describe SUM as, as strong coupling holographically and SUM as a ZM one for sync. And the goal is to see this uh, from holography. So the strategy that uh, we implement is to reduce type 2B supergravity on uh, T11, which is topologically again S2 times S3. And so the UV uh, in, uh, in particular, Let's focus first on the UV Klebanov structure solution. So, where, uh, where uh, in, part in particular, where we are close to the slice, where the, the, where the, the solution corresponds to the uh, theory, uh, which were, were one of the two uh, gauge coupling has, to, has flown to strong coupling. So, we want to restrict ourselves to a uh, small, so to, we want to study the holography. The, the holography uh, close to this, to, to very close to the slices. And in particular, for the validity of the solution, we want to restrict ourselves to, uh, to J bigger than K. So because at J equal K, we will have the strongly coupled uh, SUM super young means, and then in that case, the solution will, will change and the, the, the solution will be the default cone. So the general strategy is to look at the theory which describes this fluctuation of the flux field around the background value. So in particular, um, the, we will have uh, the fluctuation of F3 will, will be uh, given by DC2, where C2 is now a, a two-form field in the, in the five-dimensional external space. And then we'll also activate uh, a scalar as an axiom due to the fact that there is an S2 in the geometry, and which is twisted by the rib vector. The rib vector is just the dual of the U1 R symmetry. And the U1 R symmetry of this background is associated with the op fiber of the S3 uh, inside this T11 geometry. So moreover, there is also a B2, which is associated with expansion of uh, H3 around these background values. And uh, F5 is also a similar expansion, where now we have this A2. Okay, so uh, we expanded around the, uh, if, you, if you want, the, we expand around the representative of, of the cohomology. So we, we will have a two cohomology, which is non-trivial, which is uh, related to this uh, 
uh, S2, and we will have a free cohomology, which is related to this S3, and these are the representative of the, of the cohomology in this space. And as I said, C0 is an axion and is uh, two pi periodic. So then by reducing this, we can reduce the equation of motion or we can reduce the, the action uh, by uh, also uh, imposing the Bianchi identity and, uh, and the set duality of the uh, five form uh, flux. And what we get is the following action. So these are just uh, some of the important term of the, uh, of the, the five dimensional action. And the first term, which is not dominant because uh, it's uh, two derivatives. So uh, since we want to work at our uh, at, at very, uh, very large distance, so Rj is big, but uh, uh, R prime is still small, but even for Rj big, which means for uh, R, R big, this term is, it, it will be still uh, uh, subdominant with respect to these other two terms. But it still implies some, something important, which is the breaking of the U1 R symmetry to Z2M. So this is the Stuckerberg coupling, and uh, this is the, the, the manifestation in, uh, in the supergravity of the breaking, uh, by which is in field theory is due to the chiral or IBJ anomaly. Moreover, these uh, two terms are very important, and this would be the dominant term of uh, F for uh, R very large, but close to the, to the slices for R prime very small. And C is the combination of these two fields where I def, uh, define here. So C2 was defined here and A2 was defined here. And P and Q are co-prime numbers. Okay, so let's analyze the first coupling. And the first coupling is very important because it will tell us about the global structure of the dual field theory. And in particular, by studying the possible boundary condition, we can really uh, uh, see the global structure of these dual field theories and the relation to one form symmetries. So for example, we can start, so the first boundary condition would be B2 uh, Dirichlet, the boundary, and C Neumann. So this means that C varies at, the, at each slice, so it's free to vary the, at each slice. And the, the dual theory has now gauge group, which is at each slice, SUK minus J plus one N times SUK minus J N. And moreover, the, the variation with respect, uh, so the, the condition that we get for this boundary condition is that M dB2 uh, must be equal to zero. We, we see that M B2 now defines a basically a ZM value field, which is related to the one for symmetry in ZM. Another um, aspect that is important is that indeed it happens that uh, if we study the F1 strings, which will give rise to the whistle line because the F1 strings will be electrically charged under this P2. Then if we put uh, M F1 strings uh, in this geometry, so which terminate at the, at the, at the, at the slice Rj, then this will be, will be screened by what is called the baryon vertex. So the baryon vertex, is, uh, is a coupling of the theory. So, and which trivialize N, uh, in this case, M F1, screen, uh, F1 strings. And it is given by a combination of D5 brain, uh, which have uh, this flux configuration. So this uh, is a probe D5 brain, uh, together with a probe uh, D3 brain wrapping S3. And in this case, the five brain will be, will be in P1. So we, and we see that here we need K minus J and uh, uh, M strings. And in this case, we, we, we will need M, uh, M strings. So in the, uh, the great common device would be M in this case. So M F1 strings would be screened by this baryon vertex. So the other two boundary conditions, so the first one is just given by exchanging C and B2 and is related to this global form of uh, the gauge group. And then there is a more general boundary condition, which happens when M factorizes into two uh, in this way. But I will be focusing on this first boundary condition. And 
this also will be dictated by what is uh, uh, what happens in the for the infrared solution, and we'll see this in in a second. So the third coupling, which is very important, is the a mixed anomaly between a one four symmetry whose background are B two and this A, which is uh, the background field for the Z two M uh, zero four symmetry, which comes from uh, the U one R symmetry. So in this case, the periodicity, this is anomaly because the periodicity are specified by, uh, by this. So now A has periodicity in, in uh, one over two M because uh, uh, the, the A has been broken to, to the U1 R symmetry has been broken to Z2 M. And B2 by the, cho uh, by the choice of boundary condition has periodicity one over M. So then this will give uh, rise to one anomaly in the, in the following sense, in the sense that the, uh, if we uh, compute the partition function um, coupled to this background, one, uh, to this background for the one for symmetry, and we apply a zero form symmetry transformation, Z to M, then the partition function will, uh, will obtain an anomalous phase in this way. So this is anomalous now because B2, this big B2 is, uh, is uh, associated to this small B2. Uh, in, uh, in this way, and where B2 has, has integer period. And we see that the fractional coefficient make, makes this uh, uh, a non trivial phase and, and, and therefore a non uh, But this anomaly is very important because the, we can now constrain the strongly coupled physics. And the strongly coupled physics is constrained by, uh, by the anomaly, by Toft anomaly matching. And moreover, by also. Uh, topological quantum field theory properties of the, uh, the gap confining bar. So the infrared physics of a four dimensional gap confining vacuum is modeled by a, a topological quantum field theory, a TQFT. And in this paper, it was shown that if uh, the anomaly or if this omega is non trivial, then there is no TQFT which has these two symmetry. Uh, in a, so the reverse implication says that if you have a TQFT, then omega must be zero, or in particular on, 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 on certain spin magnitude. And this theorem was proven by using certain basic properties of unitary top, uh, TQFTs. So, but I don't want to discuss the, uh, the, the proof of this theorem, but I, I rather discuss the consequence of this theorem. So the first consequence is that omega is equal to zero when Z2M breaks to Z2. So this is basically what is called here chiral symmetry break. So we see that chiral symmetry breaking is a necessary condition for having this infrared uh, TQFT. Moreover, uh, this spontaneous uh, chiral symmetry breaking tells us that there are M aqua and this M aqua are basically interpolated by domain walls, which are defined wrapping S3 in this Klebano structure term. So the question that we also uh, uh, wanted to answer was that, what is this TQFT that modeled this? And now can we derive this TQFT? And it turns out that by using holography, we can derive this TQFT. So, we study, in order to derive this TQFT in the infrared, we study the infrared Klebanov Strasser solution, which is the default conifold. And in particular, the default conifold where tau, uh, now tau is uh, this radial coordinate, and uh, tau is very small. When tau is very small, we cannot ignore anymore the kinetic term. So because there is no uh, uh, yeah, uh, hierarchy of, uh, of uh, higher derivatives because we're working at really at small distances in terms of tau. So we, an additional, we have an additional ingredient, which are the domain walls, and these are D5 on S3. And D5 will have this C6 uh, word volume uh, field, which decompose on omega three will give an C3. And in fact, we can dualize the F3 in this way, and we can dualize the, so this turns out that the dual, the odd dual of this combination is basically DC3. So we, by plugging in this in, back into the action, what we get is this five dimensional action. 
And this five dimensional action implies two things. The first thing is that if we do variation calculus with respect to uh, C0, what we get is that we get this equation. So this equation also uh, can be computed and can be derived by reducing directly the 10 dimensional equation of motion on the uh, deformed conifold. So this is a, uh, very important now because if we then study the, if we then study this action, in, especially evaluated on, on, uh, on this at the boundary, what we get is this boundary action in four dimension. So this boundary action is a uh, TQFT, which was also predicted in, uh, it was also predicted in, uh, in, uh, in field theory. But in this case, we derived it from holography. And it's important that the symmetries of this TPFT are, there is a one for symmetry. So B2 is a, a background field. So it's not a, a dynamical field of the theory. The dynamical field of the theory will be C0 and C3. And this B2 is the background for the one for symmetry. And moreover, the C0 is still a periodic scalar, which is now dynamical. And the period, the, this, this shift is basically what's left of the, Z, of the Z1 field broken to Z2. Uh, zero. So some properties of this TQFT is, is that this TQFT realize this spontaneous breaking. And in particular, uh, I mentioned that the, the domain walls of this TQFT are given by uh, the phi brain wrapped on this S3 in the uh, IR Klebanov structure solution. So what, what this means is that K the phi brain will now source an F3 and this F3 will uh, uh, restrict that uh, the C0, the VEV for C0 will be now, will be given by K. The K is the number of the phi brain on S3. And F3 is supported on the geometry on this free, uh, free cycle, which is a cone over the S2 and shrinks for tau going to zero. It shrinks to zero size at tau, go, uh, tau going to zero. So how do the anomaly is matching the IR is that the anomaly is matched by implementing this shift. So when we send K to K plus one, then there will be an anomaly associated to this part of the action. And this is basically the action of the Z2M symmetry on the IR theory. Okay, so let me conclude by saying that the one for symmetry and in particular this, uh, the relation between the zero for symmetry, uh, so the Z2M symmetry uh, and uh, Kara symmetry breaking and the mixed anomaly between the Z2M field uh, symmetry and zero for symmetry and the ZM one for symmetry constrain the IR dynamics of the N equals one super Yamis theories. Moreover, we derive uh, the one for symmetry. We also derive the anomaly. So this anomaly, which constrain the IR dynamics. And in particular, we finally derive the TQFT, which describe the infrared dynamics of this theory. So this, is, uh, this was derived and this for, a, uh, was derived for, a, for this setup where uh, the supergravity theory is very well under control and um, in a, and it has these two different regimes, UV uh, solution and IR solution. But it, it does happen that this framework can be generalized to many setup in uh, string theory engineering, where the geometry is given by a cone with a boundary manifold at infinity. So for example, G2 manifold in M theory, uh, they have a boundary, which looks like a product of S3 times S3 mod gamma. So this again will be interesting to study four dimensional super -yamis. But it, this uh, logic can be also applied to other examples. For example, for a uh, for Calabria free folds in M theory, and where the boundary geometry will be given by YPQ, which are also well studied five dimensional spaces. And this will be interesting to study, for example, anomaly and perhaps the dynamics, the strongly coupled dynamics, which now happens in the UV for five dimensions for conformal field theory. So thank you for the attention.
Great. Uh, thanks for the very nice talk, Fabio. Uh, let us all clap um, and we'll take some questions. Uh, I, I one, one thing I was a little confused about was um, uh, whether this technology of these one form symmetries was necessary to in, infer this IR topological quantum field theory. Or like, since I know there are D5 brains and I know the properties of the domain walls, can I? It's, it, yeah. Is that it's, constraining it's, enough to, to figure out what this IR theory is or? Well, it's important to, um, to have this coupling and this coupling is, uh, um, is there when you activate the background. Uh, I see. For the ones for symmetry. And this is very, uh, what, mainly constrain this DQFT. Uh, I, I see. So so without, will I be able to see that coupling just by knowing that there are these M D5 brain domain walls that exist in the theory or? Yeah, I think so, but you would need to activate this P2, which is okay. the okay. for okay. the 1%. Okay. Okay. So it, it comes all together automatically. Yeah. yeah. So it's all, yeah. it's all uh, everything is related. I see. Um, and it looks like Craig has a question. Hi, Abu. Yes, uh, I'm not sure if I just if I just missed something, but um, so in the in the final summary slide, you said you can do generalizations to magnifications from string theory. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but what about other options? I don't know if you've looked into this, but like taking a 60 SCFT and compactifying it on an open Riemann surface, so with a boundary. Um, is there some obstruction to just using the same framework in that setup? I don't know if Riemann surfaces with boundaries are really an interesting enough set of things, but like punctured Riemann surfaces all have boundaries and these are very well studied objects. Yeah, yeah I mean, there would be probably more contribution there. There would be the contribution from the boundary of the of the, so I'm, I'm a bit speculating, but there will be a compact from the boundary of that uh, frame of surface, as well as from the Calabiao being compact. Right, but but so I, I guess my question is, can you start from the 60 perspective? So there is the non-compact Calabiao, et cetera, which engineers the 60 theory to start with. Um, but can you forget about that and use the same framework just starting from the 60 perspective? If you know, if you know, uh, like what happens in a 60, yeah, then yes, I think so. But you okay. need to know what happens in a 60. You I need to know what happens at 40. Right, right. Cool. Thanks. Great. Um, since we are quite a bit over time now, uh, let us. And thank both of our speakers for the very nice talks.